Welcome to the Bama Bo Show. I am your host, Bama Bo. Today I've got another ex football player on, and I'm really pumped about this one. We all know, love, and remember Marquise Mays. Let's get this going and talk to him. Two-time national championship member, wide receiver, and return man extraordinaire, Marquise Mays. Marquise, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's so good to have you, and I really appreciate you taking some time to just come on and talk. And listen, fans love to hear from players, love to hear from players. So i got to ask you first, though, Marquise, because I'm dying to know, you grew up in Birmingham, literally about 20 minutes from me, but were you an Alabama fan growing up? Uh, somewhat. Um, as a kid, I really just liked players. So uh, coming from Birmingham, you we always heard about David Palmer growing up. And I actually played uh, Little League football against uh, two of his kids. So, Oh, wow. Well, that was a good one to – to one, I mean, who didn't love David Palmer? I mean, the deuce. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about your time at Bama. You started, listen, I don't know that anybody predicted this run Saban was going to be on, but you were there from pretty much the beginning of it. Just talk a little bit about what the expectations were and what was it, what was it like, basically, when you got to campus? Uh, well, I got there in 2007. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't notice, uh, wouldn't notice, but I was actually Coach Saban's first recruit at uh, Alabama. Uh, the day after he got the job, they gave me a call. Mike Shula didn't offer me at the time. Mike Shula hadn't offered me at the time, and it was the only SEC school I didn't have an offer from was Alabama. And so... Basically, when Coach Saban got there, he was telling me don't hold it against his coaching staff with the past coaching staff you didn't see. Or, um, so I listened to him, and uh, the rest was history. But the expectations coming in was uh, like on the recruit, well, on the recruiting side, when he came to see me at home. Uh, the first thing he told me was I would have opportunity to play if I was ready to play. Most coaches everywhere else was telling me that I was gonna start and I was gonna be this star and everything I really they everything they thought I wanted to hear instead of telling me the truth. So the process of what's going on now is basically uh he was hard nosed his first couple of years. And then it kind of settled down. Usually he hard knows on the younger guy because he's trying to, uh, I guess he's trying to mostly try to see if you mentally prepare. And he'll break, he breaks some guys down. So. And so that that's interesting because I've actually heard other players say that. I think even Julio Jones said that, that he basically kind of said, he didn't he didn't come in there, you know, blowing smoke up him either. That's really interesting. He had a different recruiting tactic. I like right. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> okay, so Marquise, let's just go through your college career a little bit. You were there a while and you saw I mean two SEC championships, two national championships, which would end up being the beginning of the run for Saban. And you the thing that I think was so electric about you from a fan standpoint was just you were so fast. I mean, probably what the fastest on the team at times, I would say. Is that fair to say? Right. <laughs> yeah, I was probably the fastest on the team for um, five years. Well, well. Okay, so yeah, I, I kind of figured that you were you were lightning fast. And then, you know, not only were you a great receiver with great hands, great route runner, all of those things, but just you were just so electric on kickoff returns and punt returns. And those were the days where it was just like, oh, Lord, when it gets in number four's hands, what's going to happen? I mean, you were just that electric. And fans loved it. Fans loved that to watch on returns. But I want to ask you about the basically the year of, 
the LSU game of the century. Everyone's feelings were hurt in Bryant Denny. And then to come back and win in the championship. But talk about that game. Because everybody says that that Bama knew they were the better team and just didn't win. How did y'all really feel about that? Uh, I felt like everybody thought we knew we were the better team. Um, we missed a couple of field goals. We got in the red zone a few times and didn't capitalize as an offense. Um, the defense did a hell of a job that that night, and I just felt like it lied on the on the on the offense. And uh, I was pretty upset because. I felt like, you know, they had all – the talk was all about LSU the whole week. And um, we knew we were better. Uh, they intimidated a lot of teams. And it was hard to intimidate us. Yeah. Because we, we, we were di- uh, built different. Yeah. So, you know what was funny about uh, that, Marquise? Just, uh, just really quickly, I was going to tell you, my son was down there during that time at Alabama – and he was a student, and he calls me up, and he was like, Mom, uh, this game of the century, I've never seen ESPN down here a week early. Like, it was insane. That game was such a big game. Crazy. Yeah, it was It was pretty It was pretty intense game. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rivalry, but just mainly because of Coach Saban. Let's talk about, Marquise, let's talk about the actual championship game. So you got the redemption. You come back to the game. And and you personally, I know that was a bittersweet game, but just going into the game, talk about the mindset of the players. Oh, the mindset was just win championship <laughs> at that point. We knew we were better. Uh, just going back and watching the film of the game, we see where we made our mistakes. And uh, basically, we just corrected. And I felt like at the end of the day, we wanted that game more than they did. And uh, I felt like they got a little complacent. Even I think some of that... I think they coach staff got complacent with uh, because they tried to do the same thing to us in the championship game that they did in the in the regular season game. They did, yes, <laughs> they did. Yeah. And then as for you personally, Marquise, because I know that that I teared up during that game, but you, I believe it was the second punt return where I really thought you were going to take it to the house, and then you pulled up mm-hmm. with that hamstring. And went off to the right. sideline. And I'm sitting there screaming at the television, walk it off, walk it off. And then when you went back down, I knew, you know, you could just see it in your face. And then a little while later, just the emotion that you had on the sideline. I know that was hard not to be able to reenter that game. What was your thoughts? Yeah, it was my thoughts was, man, I, um, I wanted to I prepare for this game, wanted this game so bad. As anybody can recall, I told the media the night after that game that we would play them again, and the outcome would be different. I said it the same night in an interview on, I I forgot who I did it with, but I said it the same night in the interview that we would play them again, and we went, the outcome would be different. But I just wanted that game so bad because it was my last game, yeah, my last college game, man. It was hurtful not to be able to, you know, perform with with the rest of the team. Yeah. And it was it was just like a man, this was the worst feeling, the worst thing that could happen to me at this at this point. Not just not because the injury really that it hurt it. It did hurt. I just wanted to be in that game. But fortunately for me we came out on top anyway. And really, you know, kudos to Kevin Norwood. He really stepped up that night. So it, it still right. worked out. But just seeing you on the sidelines and, and just feeling your heart, I, I think every fan felt it and every fan was disappointed. But And it was your last game. But you know what? Hey, you were such a team player. You were still over there cheering everybody on and doing what typical Marquise Mays would do anyway. So we appreciate that. That's right. <laughs> And then let's let's switch to now, Marquise, what you see with Alabama. So this is this is practice week, right? This is the first week for fall coming up at Alabama. They start practice mm-hmm. on Friday. Uh, they'll have fan day on Saturday. Just tell us what this week would typically be like under Saban. It's still work. You got workouts. Uh, still got workouts and um, stuff like that, class. 
So once you finish with that, it's just about being mentally prepared for camp. Uh, now it's a little easier because they don't have two a days and all that type stuff. So it's a little more relaxed than it was when I was there. But yeah, it's just mentally preparing yourself for camp. He doesn't make it hard. It's just the fact that okay, you know, you got all these great players around. The pressures of not performing in camp and being and not being able to play or not being able to get on the field during the season. I think that's the most pressure most guys go. Yeah, that's a good point. And then I want to ask you just on a side note, from you being there, what's one of your favorite memories, Marquise? Just being in the locker room is, my, is pretty much one of my favorite moments, just being in the locker room, laughing and joking with the rest of my teammates. Um, it's nothing real on the field because it was just football, but I think the memories we had with one another as a team is what I cherish the most. Yeah, that's really cool. And can you tell us something about Saban that we don't know? Because he just seems so, you know, from our point of view as a fan, like militant, hard to to work for. But what is he like inside that locker room? Coach Saban won the most. Uh, I mean, he'll give you the shirt off his back if he could. Like I say, he, he, he is an all-around great person, um, great father figure. He's very, very playful. A lot of people wouldn't know that. Because they not at well when the media don't get that side, but he is very very playful. Actually, play a little too much if you ask me. Are you serious? Like he plays like he jokes around? Yes. Oh no way! Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. So is he like? Does he do like silly stuff? Tell jokes? Just laugh and cut up? What? Yeah, just tell jokes. Um, I can give you an instance. Well, one day we was in um. Uh, we was, in, we was watching film, and he was getting on to me about something. So I had an attitude, and uh, we get so once we got to practice on on the practice field, he come out and slapped me on my butt and say, "You still mad at me?" <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it! I love it. Well, so tell me a little bit about before we end this, because I'm not going to keep you too long. I appreciate your time, but I do want to talk about what you're doing now, Marquise. All the fans want to know. So you've started a new job. Tell us about it. Yeah, I'm uh, working, coaching a high school football team here in Birmingham, uh, Tarrant High School, actually a high school I went to. Uh, I have a little league program that I run. Uh, it's called the East Lake Cowboys. And basically, I'm just trying to get back to the youth because there's been a lot of kids that's been going down the wrong path. And I feel like at this, at that, at the high school age, and, and really at the little league age, is where we can test those kids and, and steer them in the right direction. Wow! And you know that's what one of the reasons I wanted to reach out to you because I saw you tweeting about that, and I always think that's fantastic to do that to step in and help these kids. That's a huge thing to do. I mean, and. So appreciative. I know these families have got to be so appreciative that you're trying to give back. That's awesome to do, Marquise. And then I forgot that yeah. you, I, you went to Tarrant. That's right. So you're back coaching right. at Tarrant. Yes, ma'am. That's so awesome. I'm just trying to build that program too, uh, because it 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 haven't it, it haven't been the same since I uh, since about two years after I left. But I'm trying to rebuild that program and. It's it's gonna be a tall task right now for these next these next year or two, but it's nothing I can't handle. For the most part, I'm I'm trying to just do what I can for the for the kids because I mean I I didn't like no disrespect to a lot of the guys that that came before me, but I never seen them come back in and do what I'm doing, and it was it was like. To me, that was disheartening because these kids are looking up to these players, and most players don't come back besides once a year or uh, uh, do a camp. And I, I don't think that's fair to those kids. So uh, I'm just trying to do my just do. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, I don't even know if I have any words for that. Tell the audience, Marquise, what we can do to help with these kids. Well, we take any kind of donation, big or small, 
Um, right now, especially where well, the high school kids don't really need no help, but right now, um, you could we don't have a actual what's name, so the donations really go into my name, and then I just put it on in the system for our, the kids that really needed the most because some some parents are able to pay but it's a lot of parents that's not and uh our goal is not to never turn a kid around and tell them you can't play so what we do is we try to get all of the things they need or they might need within a year uh we try to take the kid to a turkey day classic during thanksgiving uh either in florida or texas or somewhere wherever wherever the Turkey Bowl Classic is that year. We try to take the kids there too, so it sponsors all that. Right now, you could just, uh, if you really want to donate, just donate to, uh, just get in contact with me uh, on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. And I'm going to put all that information up on the show as well. And then also, okay. also, Marquis. Listen, I just want to tell you, from an Alabama fan, you saw a need, and you went out and did that, and that's extraordinary. So we appreciate you doing that and giving back. That's just, I think people needed to hear that, that players actually will do something like you're doing and, and seeing that need and not turning these kids away. So that's, we love it, and we appreciate you for that. And I appreciate you yeah, taking I, time to come on and, and talk about it. Thanks for having me Um I appreciate all the fans also because I've, I've had a few people that sent donations and I really am very appreciative for that. Well, we want to make sure you get more donations. So we're going to we're going to keep pushing this a little bit and I'm going to, you know, tell everybody where they can hook up with you and, and we'll see what else you can come up with to help these kids. I think it's a great thing to do. And also, I want to thank you, too, Marquise, for just simply being such a loyal player. And Alabama fans are loyal. And because we're loyal, we like to know what you're up to. And everybody's going to enjoy this, just getting to hear from Marquise Mays. And we appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day, and I hope you have a lot of success. And if you ever need anything, please reach out, and I'll help any way I can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> thank you, Marquise. Take care. All right. What a cool conversation with Marquise Mays. I love getting inside the heads of these ex-football players and seeing what it was like working with Saban and just the locker room feel and what they've got to say. And I thought it was really cool that he was recruited in the same way Julio Jones was. Saban's got a different tactic, and I love it. I love it. And then also... What he is doing with these kids is really, really cool. He saw a need in Birmingham area. He saw a need with kids that were underprivileged and couldn't afford to play football. And he wants to be able to give back. So please, I encourage you, if you can help, please look him up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's Marquise Mays. If it's on Twitter, it's at MaysBoy4, M-A-Z-E-B-O-Y-4. Look him up, send him a message, and see what you can do to help. It's greatly appreciated, and it's really needed. I live in this area. I know. So that's why I really wanted to reach out to him and let him talk about what it is that he's doing and really get the word out. So please, I really encourage you to go help. Every little bit helps. And it's a really good thing for these kids to get to do something they didn't think they were going to get to do. So, and I just wish nothing but the best for him. Super big hearted guy. Also, I want to thank Soul Street Coffee, the coffee of the Bama Bo Show. Look them up on Twitter. Give them a follow. It's at Soul ST Coffee. You can go to their website from there, soulstreetcoffee.com. They've got new flavors coming out all the time. It's all really, really good. You will love it. Also, thanks to Title Towel, the towel of the Bama Bo Show. Look them up on Twitter. Give them a follow. It's at Title Towel. And you can go to their website from there, whitwillsports.com. Get you some Alabama gear. It's super affordable, and you will thank me later. Also, a special thanks to Darren Duke for lending me his song, as always. You can look him up on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel. He's a songwriter. He's really good. Got a lot of good music. It's at Cap N Dito, C-A-P-N 
D-E-D-O. Look him up there. And you can look up my website. It's The Bama Bo. Everything I do is right there, whether it's podcasts, Periscopes, Twitter, YouTube. Everything is on that page. Easy to navigate. And also, please give me your feedback. If you don't like something or you do like something, let me know. I'm happy to change it. Open to suggestions. And be on the lookout for the new show that I'm also going to be doing with Jerome. It's going to be called The j Show. And we're going to take live callers. We're hoping to get that ready in the next week or two. That's right, live callers. We want to hear from you guys talking sports, SEC, any football you want to talk about. Yeah, we're Alabama fans, but we follow it all and encourage all of you to come talk to us. We're really excited about it. So this is going to be a great year, great season, a lot of great guests. And hey, until next time, roll tide and peace out. Showed up for miles around to watch a freight train mow a honey badger down to a familiar sound in that cage in town. The same rammer jammer, yellow hammer. Mm-hmm, yeah. Give them hell, Alabama. Yeah, and he's a good man. He's got fear in as long as the time. Some through and He's a member of the Saber Nation.